so we're students from Tatlin School and we've been investigating the low energy observation in TinFix data. So we started with our TinFix 101 data and as you can see we, jam we began plotting it on a world map projection and the red bit highlighted the South Atlantic anomaly. Uh, so the normal capture time is 4 seconds, but we notice that high energy causes uh, capture time to decrease. And so we requested 6 months worth of data from Tim Peake's mission, and we plotted it on here. And as you can see, it clearly highlights the South Atlantic anomaly here. Uh, when we began plotting this, the first thing we did is plot frame energy, uh, so in order, and we started to notice that there was, well, we should have been recording zero frame energy, so zero pixels hit, no particle interactions, or we were actually recording just this uh, negative amount of energy, which isn't allowed in physics. Uh, so uh, we, we contacted Iris and we said, do you know anything about this? And they, uh, they put us through to NASA and we, we told them about this anomaly. And then uh, they'd already heard about it, but what we helped them do is find out that it was happening much more often than it actually was. So we then uh, went on to plotting these. Uh, on here, there's 1,152 zero energy hits, so nothing happened in any of these. And we get this sort of shadowed effect, so we can, we can see all, uh, all the uh, features that we've been seeing <coughs> all day, but in this negative perspective, so we can see the South Atlantic anomaly, we can see this. Uh, lack of low energy across America, and we can also see the difference in densities of low energy across the planet. But we have a bit of an issue here with lack of data. As you can see, there's not a lot of definition. So we start thinking about how we could include more data points in our set, and we realised that by increasing the number of pixels that have been hit on the detector by a small amount, we can increase our number of data points by quite a large amount. So this is from 0 to 10 pixels. As you can see, there's a lot more data points on here. I think there's 65,000 or something, that's not, I, I don't know. There's a lot of data points <laughs> on this map. <laughs> and then we increase it again to 0 to 20 pixels, and as you can see, if I get this to work, oh, yep. Around here, we've got a very linear edge to our, around the South Atlantic anomaly here, whereas at the top, you can see it's a lot less linear, a lot less defined. So then we looked at, oh dear, <laughs> somebody stop it. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll skip that, I'll talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> so we plotted, the, we plotted the points in bands, the number of pixel bands, and we created the animation that you couldn't really see there because it went a bit mad. Um, but we picked up this one, this is the number of pixels from 250 to 299 and as you can see it's very dense around this square shape here but then on the inside it's an oval shape and the South Atlantic anomaly, remember the less than 4 second data from earlier, would fit very well inside this hole but then why is there this square shape around the outside, that's what we start to question. And so then we put them together and you can see that there's a gap around the edge here Sorry, I was just putting that in your head. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that this is gap, this gap where we've got the round shape of the South Atlantic anomaly with the li <coughs> very linear shape around the edge of the low energy data. And so I'll pass it to you. Right, so at this point, uh, the website we've been using to uh, plot this data um, started to crash quite a bit because we had a bit too many data points. So then we used uh, some new software called Tableau, which we uh, only recently got access to. So here's a plot of the 0 to 50 um, data points here, and you can quite clearly see the sort of uh, linear edge there. And then this one's interesting, uh, pick this one up, because less than 200, because you can quite see, clearly see the shape of the anomaly there. Um, so then, because you can quite clearly see the shape there, we decided to compare it to some international geomagnetic reference maps. So if you see, if you look at the map, the shape of the um, anomaly there is quite similar to the shape that we have um, on our plot. So <coughs> then we looked at this one, which is particularly interesting. Uh, this one's from uh, ground magnetic observations and low Earth orbiting satellites. 
And this one's particularly interesting because if you look at the 24,000 nano Tesla band on the map there, it lines up really quite almost exactly with our plot there. Um, so that was interesting. And uh, in the future, we hopefully will get some more data that we can access um, so we can try and improve the accuracy um, of our estimation of the anomaly and uh, get a bit more detail in our plots. Uh, our next goal is to extract the raw tintic data from this mission, from the root data. And by doing this, we hope to be able to plot the specific radiation and then find the correlation with the South Atlantic anomaly. I just wanted to point out something that we're hoping to do in the future throughout the next year of our research. Uh, this is a graph I made over the summer, which is a cumulative uh, frequency a diagram of energy as we increase along the x-axis of energy and the y-axis being frequency. Uh, what, what we were interested in here is what you can only expect for radiation is an exponential decay, which would be a nice smooth curve decreasing as we get, uh, go along the x-axis. But we do get this quite obvious uh, defined hump, which we uh, don't, <coughs> but we, we're going to research throughout the next year and want to try and understand this. We've got a few ideas of what we might expect from it, but that would ruin next year's talk. Uh, <laughs> Um, also, from this, we're hoping to do a little bit of spectral analysis on the types of particles that are emitted in our uh, in, in each decay. So, and try and combinations of different particles see if any particular <coughs> groups of energy are much are more frequent. So, try and figure out the combinations of particles that would cause that. Uh, thank you for listening. We've enjoyed our time with Iris so much over the past year. We're going to enjoy a whole other year of doing this research, and we're looking forward to our great careers in STEM. Thank you. Woo! Thank you.